who's ready to get creative up in here? Hey everybody, this is Christopher Talon, host of Creative Ops, a podcast for creative people, by creative people. The people that make this possible are, first of all, the very first guest I ever had, Paul Brogan of Rivertown Adventures, rivertownadventures.com. Go there to find all the fun things you can do outside in Lansing, Michigan. It's the place to go, whether you're by yourself, on a date, you got a party to throw, they got something for everything, buddy. Go check them out, rivertownadventures.com. You won't be disappointed. Also check out Baby Farm Soaps. I got plenty of soap. I'm going to be smelling good for a long time. I got plenty of lip balm. My lips are going to be smooth for a long time. I got plenty of hand cream. My knuckles are not flaking off into bloody oblivion this winter. Baby Farm Soaps. They got something for everything. They're only on Facebook. Baby Farm Soaps. And then uh, last but not least, this show wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Hey Guys Media Group. Go to heygeysmediagroup.com, see what they got going on. Like I said, I I wouldn't be able to do the show without them. It literally would not be a thing if it weren't for these guys. If you've ever had a thought, did I say that right? If you've ever had a thought, I can do a podcast. I just don't know how to do it. (laughs) Well, then yeah, then these are the guys. Heygeysmediagroup.com. They can help you make your podcast dreams a reality. Hey guys, mediagroup.com. All right, enough of that. Today we're going to be talking about Bright Walls Mural Festival that's in Jackson, Fest- uh, Jackson, Fest- that's in Jackson, Michigan. Um, the Bright Walls Mural Festival is something that is the brainchild of a few people. One of those people is Clay McAndrews. Clay McAndrews is a creative guy from Jackson, Michigan, who's got a background in graphic design, advertising, photography events. Um, and uh, he just wanted to see all the things you see in bigger cities in his city. So he went out there and he just made it happen. Really cool guy. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and I hope you get a chance to check out the Bright Walls Festival at brightwallsjackson.com or in person in Jackson, Michigan. Hopefully this year they'll uh, have the finale coming up and we'll hear more about that. So enjoy this interview with Clay McAndrews. Thanks for coming on the show. Sounds like you've been a busy dude. We also just had the holidays. Do so you have a good holiday? Yeah. Yep. So our holidays, um, not as crazy as some. Uh, thankfully, my wife, uh, my wife's family and my family, we're both from uh, the same city in Jackson, so we don't have to travel too far. Uh, and I know other people have to, you know, hike it to out of state or beyond. So, uh, yeah, yeah we're, uh, it was a little bit different as anyone else's um, Thanksgiving was probably different, too. Uh, yeah. with the pandemic so but we made the most of it and yeah we're looking looking forward to spending time for for christmas we'll see how that goes yeah yeah we didn't what about you what do you what, what about you we just hung out with family didn't see anybody uh you know did some zoom calls some facetime stuff like that but sure uh, hopefully you're, based the, you're in uh grand rapids yeah yep okay. i uh, live in granville okay so cool yeah um but actually i'm originally from lansing so um Jackson was closer to me then than it is now, but uh, I'd never heard of Bright Walls until just recently. I had Zach Snyder, who, you, you know Zach? I do. Yeah. Yep. Um, he was talking about Bright Walls uh, on the show with me, and that was the first time I'd heard of it. So actually, we started talking about it, and I was looking it up on the show. Since then, I've had just this bug. I've just really wanted to talk to you about it. Was this something that I, I looked into uh, the Jackson Anchor Initiative a little bit? Was this something that was born out of that or is it a totally separate thing? Uh, so this is a separate thing. This was born from the Jackson Young Professionals, and which is an organization that my wife and I helped start um, about six years ago. Okay. And that, I guess, was born from the Jackson Anchor Initiative. Um, and my wife, her job at the time, um, she helped start the Jackson Anchor Initiative through our employer, Consumers Energy. So um, is look, our employer was looking for ways to really find, um, uh, to get more people to live, want to live, work, and play in Jackson, Michigan. Yeah. So attracting people to want to come and work at Consumers Energy or some of the other businesses we have in Jackson. And, you know, living in Jackson, just kind of building it up 
And so as part of that, um, the Anchor Initiative said, you guys should do a form a young professionals organization. There's several young professionals organizations that are across the state of Michigan and uh, you know across the United States and beyond. Mm. And at its core, it's our, you know our our mission is to um, you know serve as an outlet for people that um, are living or, or working in Jackson and want to network, you know, build their network, meet new people. Um, learn about awesome things happening in Jackson, you know, overall just love the city, uh, city of Jackson and, you know, the uh, Jackson County and beyond. And um, it's really been successful. So it started six years ago. And a lot of the young professionals organizations, they kind of flutter out after about a year or two. Uh -huh. And we found a lot, you know, a really passionate group. Uh, and we formed a board and have about a hundred dues paying members. And I was the marketing chair for young professionals since the, since the beginning, I just turned out and my wife was the president for since the beginning, she just turned out. So okay. being the marketing chair, I was trying to figure out a way to really, um, you know, brand our young professionals organization and how do we get uh, people to recognize what we're doing around town and really just put Jackson on the map. Yeah. Um, and so that idea, came, uh, you know, me being the marketing person and then also sidetrack, my wife and I loved traveling and still do love traveling. Um, although right now she's, she's, uh, we're expecting, um, our firstborn in, uh, March of oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, so we're really excited. And it actually, I think will be like the sixth or seventh, um, uh, kid that's been born, um, comprised from our, uh, bright walls, core team. So there's been a lot of babies that, um, from our team members, you know, that have uh, been born during the three years of bright walls, which is interesting enough, but getting back yeah. to my story, we love traveling and, uh, we would always try to find a place in the United States that neither one of us had been to. And we're very much into Instagram, you know, casual millennials and love just taking fun, bright, photos and looking for picturesque backdrops. So picking um, places in the United States that we, neither one of us have been to, we would always try to find, do they have murals um, in these towns? So we'd been to Nashville. Nashville's got a lot, a lot of great murals that are either, um, you know, pop-up murals or they're, um, they're funded by a, an organization or a company. But that was one of the trips we took. Um, we'd been to uh, Cincinnati. They have really amazing murals uh some of the best in my opinion because they've really? got a great mural festival there for some reason and, i'm not surprised about nashville but cincinnati like i guess i just don't know a lot about cincinnati as a whole but yeah cincinnati man they're they're like the best kept secret of of ohio I, they're just a sweet sweet city they've got a lot a lot of cool things going and i i could talk about that a little later but okay. um so we did this for about two or three years as we were dating. And then I ultimately figured out I want to, I want to propose to her and how am I going to do this creatively? So knowing that we like to travel and take photos in front of murals and uh, interact with them, post them on Instagram, I said, well, I should, we should go down to Florida, uh, Miami, Florida, which is like the Mecca of murals. Um, Windwood walls is like the, you know, some of the some of the best murals in the United States are down there. So I booked my trip. I had ring the you know the ring I was going to propose I had in my pocket, and then like the worst hurricane ever is about to hit um, Miami, and this is two weeks before we're we're supposed to get ready to go. And I said, there's just no way. Like American Airlines was like canceling flights, so I quickly figured tried to figure out where can I go. Um, you know, to do that, you know, to propose, because I don't want to like delay too long. And my wife, my wife, Leslie was just saying, Oh, we just don't need to travel. We'll just we'll go somewhere else next year. I said, No, no, we'll, I'll find some place. She's, she's like, Well, you know, it's two weeks away, you're, you're gonna play an arm, pay an arm and a leg to, to go anywhere. So and at this time, California had terrible forest fires. So you couldn't go out west. And I just on a whim, I picked Boston. And so we went to Boston and I didn't even know if they had murals really. I just had to find a place quickly that was not outrageously expensive for the cost of a plane ticket. A few days before we're flying to Boston, 
which we flew to Boston on 9-11, which was crazy in a sense. We were, you know, my wife didn't even want to go because it was 9-11, but it was like the safest time to fly. Right. But we get to Boston and I had done some research beforehand. They had just two days before finished up a mural festival or a mural project that happened under this overpass and it's called Underground at Ink Block. And one of the artists there was Say Adams and he painted this awesome mural uh, that said love. And, as, and I, as the first time I saw it on my phone, I was like, that's it. That's where I'm going to propose. So we went there and, um, you know, I set up, I had been practicing setting up my tripod. You know, I use a, you know, micro four thirds camera and have Wi-Fi capability so I can use my phone as a remote shutter. Oh. And so I set up my, we would always set up my camera on a tripod and take pictures using my phone. Well, this time I set my camera up on video mode and just hit record. And then, you know, got down on one knee, proposed to her. And so I had it all on film. And, you know, instead of just snapping a photo, yeah. which was awesome. So that all happened and we were really excited about it. And then, you know, fast forward a, a month or so, we get back to, to Jackson and we're in a meeting for um, our Jackson Young Professionals. And I had been saying, we should do something like this, you know, like these mural festivals that are happening around uh, the United States that have been happening for years in our own community of Jackson so that people can come to Jackson and create their own memories, you know, make it a destination because we would um, travel across the United States for these destination mural festivals because it's free public art. that's yeah. really good. And we enjoyed, you know, traveling and, and finding these things almost like Easter eggs in a way. And so my, uh, young professionals board didn't really know what the heck a mural festival would even look like. Um, few of them had seen murals before, but not, you know, lots of murals in a dense pack, densely packed place. Right. So I said, you know, just run with me. I'm, I've, I've got an idea. So I put together a pitch book and we went and pitched it. Our first, um, our first business we pitched it to was the Jackson anchor initiative, you know, cause it seemed like a really great, uh, you know, thing for them to, to sponsor since their whole mission was also aligned with the young professionals of attracting and retaining talent in the city of Jackson. So yeah. I said that I pitched it to them and I, and I said like, here's the number we ultimately would love to have you as a, a sponsor. And uh, what do you think? And they loved the idea. They didn't give us the full amount that we wanted, but they gave us a significant chunk. So that was like yeah. our, that got the the ball rolling. So then we had, um, you know, we had someone to point to when we went to other businesses and said, well, we've got the Jackson Anchor Initiative involved at this amount. So that, um, you know, that all started happening very quickly. And that was in um, G January or February of 2018. Yeah. And our first festival was in October of 2018. So we pulled all that off really, really quick for the That's first insane. year. And I knew that we had in Jackson, you really have one shot to you know, make a good first impression. And if you uh -huh. flop, the community's not gonna come back to it. If you have an event that it just, you don't pull it off correctly, that the community won't support it again. So I knew for a fact we had, to, we had to do all the bells and whistles. We had to make this thing bulletproof and um, pull off something that we had never done before. So I had reached out to a friend, and this is kind of a key for us in the first year. We didn't really know how to do this uh, completely. We had an idea in our head, but I reached out to a friend that I went to school with. Um, he was a few grades ahead of me at Central Michigan University. I'm a graphic design major. and He also was in the graphic design program. He also happened to be from Jackson, Michigan, went to a different high school than I, um, but he worked for, and he still does, works for WeWork. So WeWork okay. is this collaborative, uh, well, they, they make these collaborative uh, working spaces all across the, the globe. And he is in charge. He's like a creative director at WeWork. So he's in charge of, um, you know, putting together all the different artists who are going to come and uh, put in installation work in these collaborative working spaces, or they're going to commission a mural to be painted in a collaborative working space. And there's, there's a WeWork in Detroit, but there's WeWorks in like, Dubai and New York City and uh, in Asia and I mean there's all all across yeah, the globe right so reach out to him and said you know Jeremiah what do you think about um, helping us 
you know, with this first idea of a mural festival in, in Jackson. And he said, I'd love to, I, I, I think it'd be great to help out. I wanted to do something like this in Jackson. And the fact that you guys already kind of are doing all the uh, fundraising and things like that, I can help out with, with artists and, and telling you how, how things work. So he was really instrumental in helping us select a handful of artists that first year to, um, you know, getting them to want to come to, to Jackson, Michigan to paint. Some of these artists yeah. that have painted in all the mural festivals across the globe. Well, so I want to get some... into the, the selection process from the last two, but yeah, that first one, I imagine, well, man, I have so many questions about it. I want to, do you mind if I stop you and ask you a few real quick? Sure. Okay. First, I have to know why, and, and I think murals are great, but what is it about murals that you were like, you know what the city needs? Murals. What, what is it about that particular form? Mm -hmm. So the great thing about murals is um, they're, it's free public art at, at, at its core. Yeah. Um, it's not graffiti. Um, and the community really embraces it, especially when you're in a small Midwest city that doesn't see a lot of, you know, celebrities, so to speak, mm. when you have artists coming from acro across the globe, you know, the Netherlands, Brazil, Australia, um, I think you had San Francisco from Italy. and beyond, yeah. uh, to Jackson, Michigan, that doesn't happen frequently, right. if at all. So having them all there for one week, there's just so much energy happening. It's, in my opinion, it's the coolest event that's, that's ever happened in Jackson. And, the, and what I even love more about it, because I keep saying this to so many people, is there's awesome events that happen across the state of Michigan annually. They, you know, there's great yeah. beer festivals, there's art festivals and things like that. But once those events finish, there's nothing that shows for, you know, there's, there's like no permanent thing that's there for people that maybe didn't get to attend the event that yeah. they can go see on their own time. And this mural festival, there's a mural finish at the end of it and people can go and engage, you know, can go interact with it. It's free. It's there for years and years and years. So that's what I love about it the most. Yeah. Is that it's not just a, we're doing it one, it, it one and done. And if you weren't there to see it, you don't, it's gone forever. It's like, if you weren't there during the week of the festival, you can drive your family over from Detroit or there's people coming from, um, you know, Indiana and Illinois driving up for it. And, and it's, it's not competitive at all. Exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. There's, that's, that's something I love about it because art prize has been really cool around here, but the biggest um, complaint that I've heard from people that have been going to it regularly is that, you know, there's kind of an idea of what wins. And so you yeah. get a lot of people kind of starting yeah. to make similar things on the idea that, well, this is what wins. Yep. And then, yeah. Oh, hi, puppies. Yeah. <laughs> Got my dogs. Um, um, yeah. And, our, you know, our prize is a competition. Uh, yeah. Bright Walls is a free public art festival. And, and, that, and that's so great, too, because I love looking at I've got all the different years pulled up right now. Um, so I'm just clicking through the thumbnails of them. Um, it, there's, there's really not a sense of people doing the same thing. I mean, they're all murals, yes, but... Uh, and then the couple that you see that do look similar, it's because, oh, it's the same person that came back <laughs> more than once. Um, so was David Rice in the first one? David Rice, um, his first appearance was in 2019. 2019, okay. So 2019 yeah. was like our, our biggest year because we, we knew what to do after 2018. Um, we knew what we wanted to, to change. We knew, it, well, the location we held the murals was just, absolutely perfect because it was a completely redone back parking lot behind city hall and everything was fresh. Yeah. It was all, it was densely packed like we love and we got the, the bands that we wanted, the weather cooperated. I mean, everything just really aligned perfectly, absolutely perfectly for 2019. And then we were on track to have 2020 be our last year. So third and final. And the reason it being the last year is um, there's just, there's only so many, walls in in jackson that sure. that i think that we could host this the way we wanted to and yes there's more walls but uh if we wanted to go longer but um we like to host the festival in like a densely packed area so you think of in comparison to 
art prize. It's spread all over the freaking city of Grand Rapids, right. and you got to yeah. hike it. And it's like you can't see them all. I mean, so you could. It wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to see them all in the day. That's for darn sure. It, it would be. Yeah, it would be tough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be and you tough. wouldn't. You know, and there's some areas that just have a lot more, you know, energy happening. And then you show up to other, I've been to Art Prize, you know, you show up to other spots and it feels like this spot's not getting nearly as much love as some others. And at uh, Bright Walls, it's so packed, jam packed in there. And there's music, there's um, community events happening. Each yeah. day is different. Everything's free to the public. And then in addition to all that is the mural painting by all the artists from across the globe. So if, if you don't want to participate in anything, you can just walk by and look at the art take shape before your eyes. And that's really cool. So our art prize, a lot of times like they finish that work and they just installed it, mm -hmm. you know, in the river or there, or there's some that are doing it live right there, but this is taking place before your eyes. And that's kind of like a wow factor of watching this giant face of a building. You know, you come on day one and you see them sketching it out, come on day three and you're like, Oh my gosh, I know what it is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed too um some of the some of the pictures that you took and that the the artist took too, where you see the wall before, yep. a little bit during and then after. It's amazing how how some of the spaces transformed. Yeah. The, uh, the Emily Ding one is phenomenal. I'm yep. a big fan of your peace signs too, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then oh which year was it the the that must have been 2018. There's one on the side of a building and it's got somebody, it's like a kid holding a, a lantern and there's like an yep. owl. 2019. That was 2019? Yep. Yeah. Some of those spaces, like the, the art by themselves is amazing, but just how much different it looks after you've got a beautiful thing there that wasn't there before is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So 2018, you had said that you guys, it was all on the organizers to go out and find people to come and do this. I imagine after 2018 though, it was just like, okay, how are we going to look at all these portfolios? Yep. Yep. So, um, and I do want to make a clarification that the, um, so the young professionals is like the, you know, organizers of the festival, but it's a core team from the young professionals. So it's not just everyone who's involved with the young professionals. It's like a core team of 14 people that were kind of handpicked by me uh -huh. to help support uh, bright walls so like we're our own entity under the umbrella of of young professionals sure and um yeah but in terms of after we finished the first year 2018 uh 2019 we we really knew what um the crowd really loved and what we what we enjoyed uh in terms of artists and artwork and we even did a lot of polling for you know community members. We sent out a poll of what was your favorite mural from 2018, got a lot of data back and figured out, okay, these ones quickly rose to the top by a large margin. We should you know, try to find um, art, artwork that's themed around you know, animals or themed around nature, or mm -hmm. um, we didn't have any portraits really in the, the first year. So um what we've kind of learned is that people really love um just realist you know realistic artwork um you know, photo realistic artwork uh, mm -hmm. portraits um the the girl with the lantern and the um, peregrine falcon yeah there's a pigeon from the first year people think it, it's a raven but it's actually a pigeon from russia uh but yeah the things that they look like they, they came out of a magazine. Like, like there's just a, you know, a photo picture, but it's on yeah. a, a mural and it was painted with aerosol paint. So that's what people love. They also love, uh, you know, pattern and bright, bright colored walls that they can then go and engage with, take photos and post it on their Instagram stories and so forth. And after, the, I mean, the first year there's been, so, and beyond, there's been so many people that have came down to Bright Walls or traveled to Bright Walls and had their, family photos taken there or a baby announcement taken there or I, and on prom night, it was, you know, lines around the block to go oh, yeah. and take photos in front of these murals and kids I were bet. coming from every small community uh, in Jackson County to take pictures at these murals. It was cool. So, I mean, and that's what we wanted. We wanted people to come down, take pictures and create these memories in Jackson where, you know, these are otherwise just dumpy old backs of the buildings that, never saw any love and now they're getting crazy amounts of foot traffic yeah 
Yeah, they're beautiful. I, I'm curious too, you know, without getting into the specifics, how much money does it cost to put this thing on? How much, like if you were to put a pie graph together, how much money goes towards housing artists, transporting them here, getting their supplies together, or how much is how much of that stuff is on the artist to yep. get there, stay there, all that? So I'll tell you quickly, the, the model for mural festivals, because they happen all over the United States, they're, and believe it or not, a lot of them use the word walls mm -hmm. in their festival. So there's crush walls in Denver, there's wide open walls in Sacramento, there's beyond walls in Lynn, Massachusetts, um, there's, oh, there's another wall, what is it? Talking walls in Charlotte, um, there's... So there's one in Florida um, and then, you know, and beyond, but so there's a lot of these mural festivals that had the word walls in them. Yeah. Um, and the model for mural festivals is really um, you, you pay for absolutely everything for the artist and their travel, their hotel, all their meals, all the paint and supplies, all the lift and the equipment, yeah. absolutely everything is paid for they show up and they paint so that's the model for every single mural festival now there's other festivals that will pay in addition to you know in, uh, to everything uh for that artist you know as a, an enticing factor for them to want to come and paint if it's like an early starting festival uh, but then there's some other festivals that are really sought after by the artist community and they to be selected to go and paint in that festival they're like oh no i you know, pay for all my stuff and I don't need any money beyond that because the recognition I get by being a featured artist is enough for me. Yeah. Um, our first year we paid all the artists a flat rate. And the reason we did that was we quickly learned after reaching out to artists is and artists and saying, can you come paint in Jackson, Michigan? A lot of them said, where the hell is Jackson, Michigan even at? <laughs> and which was funny. And so we, we said, oh, I think we have to, we have to pay in addition to, all of their uh, expenses will pay them uh, like a, a stipend or like a, a gift at the end of it. So that it was flat rate across the board and it was enough because no other festival really did, did it at the time. Mm -hmm. And it quickly got us uh, the artists that we, that we wanted and filled our roster for us. Um, the next year we upped it a little bit more and it makes it just a really quick yes for the artists that aren't busy or, you know, aren't trying to, uh, put together a personal, com you know, a show at the time, or they're working on commission pieces. So the other thing that um, artists, they love about doing a mural festival, as opposed to doing a commissioned piece where they're just the lone person yeah. that might be hired by a business to come and paint is it feels like a artist summer camp. They love the, the environment. They get to meet people that they've never met before, but they may be followed on their social media or they're just reconnecting with people they've painted in festivals with before. So they love right. it. it. They get a lot out of it and they, they learn new techniques. And then they also get featured on that, that mural festivals, um, social media channels and get some, some shout outs. And then people go and purchase some of their work when they're selling it. Yeah. So it's, it's a great model and um, it's been happening for, Honestly, it's probably been happening for close to 10 years. So Mur Murals in the Market is a pioneer of, of mural festivals. They happen in Detroit. I've gone and toured it with um, one of the founders or an organizers, uh, Rula, and I think they do a great job. Theirs is spread out, um, more spread out. You can't really cover it. You, well, I don't think you could cover all of them on foot, um, but you, it makes for a great driving tour. We did a, a bus tour with Rula, and it was really good. And they've got more than 200 murals painted in murals in the market, which is crazy. It's a lot of murals and they've got a lot of high caliber <laughs> artists painting there. Yeah. Um, but then they'll also do custom print pieces with artists that are coming to paint. So it's organized by this, this business called one time run. Mm -hmm. And it's a print shop out of Detroit that does these prints that are, they run them one time. And so it's like a collector's piece for you know, these artists that um, all the work goes up and, you know, it's got limited, limited quantities. And once they sell out, they sell out. Um, so they'll handpick artists that want to come paint a mural. And then at the same time, they might do an artist print that is for sale. So it's enticing for those artists that want to go print. That was also, you know, had a, we had a, pulled a lot of 
uh, inspiration from Murals in the Market because that's really the only other festival that we had know, known of that was happening uh, in Michigan. And yeah. Jeremiah, who's on our team from uh, first year, he painted in Murals in the Market twice. So he had a feeling for how these mural festivals were supposed to go. And he had some connections with Murals in the Market. And so that was, that kind of got us up and running. And then year two, we knew exactly what, it, what we wanted to do. We knew artists that we wanted to book. And then we had so many portfolios being sent to us from people all across the globe. Yeah. And some of them, you know, Google was translating them for us because they were in another language. And it just was, it just felt cool for, for a small mid, Midwest town population, 30 some thousand people and uh, in the city. And to have people from across the all at all ends of the globe reaching out to us, sending us their portfolio saying, I love what you guys are doing. I want to come paint and here's my portfolio. You know, would love to hear from you since then. I've, cause you can apply on our website. I, I checked it the other day um, in the span of just one year, like it'll be a year and in, in some change. Uh, it's been 250 or more people that have sent us their portfolios. So that's, I mean, that's a lot of people in, yeah. a, in the span of a year that have sent us their work from all, of, all over. And, and you said it's about 14 people that ultimately choose, like around the selection board for yeah, that? Yeah, our team. Um, and does that, get, does that ever get heated? People be like, no, 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 this one's gotta be in. No, you're crazy. Yeah, so the first year it was really Jeremiah and I, um, we curated all the artists. You know, uh -huh. we, and we would go back and forth and, we, you know, we worked really well at picking artists. He would, he would share some and I'd, I'd just say, you know, I don't think, I, I love that work, the work of this artist. I just don't think it's a good fit for Jackson. And he would, yeah. he'd, you know, he'd agree. And he'd always push us to also make sure that we're, you know, don't just be, don't think that the people in Jackson might not like it because people beyond Jackson might like it. So there's, yeah. there's a balance of, of picking the right, the right uh, roster for a mural festival. Yeah, and for then sure. in 20, yeah, in 2019, we kind of knew, okay, we wanted to have, you know, a diverse roster of male, female, all walks of life, um, all different nationalities and so forth. So it was balanced. So I didn't feel like it was a bunch of white males painting right. in a mural festival because it could easily be that because we, you know, if you're just picking solely on, um, you know, styles of work, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of white males in the mural business. Right. And so you know, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted to make sure that we really represented everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of blood, sweat and tears that goes into organizing a festival. We're no one on our team is paid. You know, we're just, we just really think it's a great thing for Jackson and we get a lot of joy knowing that we're attracting so many people from all across the state and beyond to come to Jackson. And a lot of them have never even been to Jackson before. Yeah. And they can take their own tour of the murals and, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to be downtown and watch, watch people snapping photos with their kids. Yeah. I'm curious about uh, your event planning experience prior to this. Did you, did you have much, if any? Yeah. So um, I've helped out at events in Jackson before there's um, Ella Sharp museum is a museum in Jackson and, they host a, an art, beer, and wine festival. And I'd helped out with that three or four years in a row. And so I, I, I knew about hosting um, events and what kind of the behind the scenes, what it really takes. Yeah. And then also for my employer, Consumers Energy, I'd, I helped out with events at, uh, for Consumers Energy at a corporate stance. So I'd, I knew the, the public sense of it. I knew the corporate side of it. And it's kind of a, a mesh of those two because your the sponsors for this event are businesses you know what be it corporate or privately owned businesses and you have to make sure that you show respect to the people that are really helping pull it off for by you know donating the money to make this happen and, and showing them recognition so all of our sponsors love it and every single one of them has re-signed on so that that alone is enough to make you want to keep keep doing what you're doing. And we've heard nothing but positive things from, from our sponsors. They love it. They, they see the vision. They think it's great for the community. The city of Jackson thinks it's great. So that's, that's one thing you got to make sure that um, you're working well with whatever city you're organizing this with, because if they don't like it, then that's going to be an uphill battle. Right. 
All right. Can I ask you a few questions about your art? Sure. Well, at this point, do you consider yourself more of a artist or more of a art event organizer kind of guy, or you equally both? So I I consider myself a creative, and you know that can be building you know building um, stage you know building stages or signage or things like that using power tools and creating what I think is going to be necessary to pull off an event or doing something crazy. Um, it's designing all the the posters and brochures and look and feel and uh, social media graphics for for events. And then at the same time doing uh, a mural. Um, so, I mean, being uh, a graphic designer, you take a lot of um, fine arts class. I'm a fine arts major. So mm -hmm. I've painted before in terms of painting with aerosol paint, large scale. It was my second time doing it in 2019. First time was in 2018. And I love it. It's, it's great. It's fun. Um, if it's you're not used to a brush, is, is it hard to get? The hang of or not really? Um, it's a lot like just drawing with a pencil. I mean, you, you have to really work with it for, you know, and um, understand how the, you know, there's different caps involved when you're using aerosol paint that um, change the diameter, the width of the, the spray that comes out. So oh, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of te techniques. I mean, when you see something, someone spray painting, I mean, everyone's familiar with spray paint because they've probably all gone to Lowe's, bought yeah. some Cryolon or rust oleum chica, chica, paint, chica, chica, chica. yeah, and they yeah. wanted to spray their, <laughs> you know, plastic furniture outside or something that, like that. Yeah, yeah. This is not at all, the, the paint used is not at all what you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, this is a, this is an artist grade paint that is actually mm -hmm. made in Germany and um, it's called Montana and it's the, the industry standard for all artists that are graffiti artists that are um, street artists they are using montana paint there's uh, some other off brands but this is like you know this is this comprises probably 90 percent of all aerosol street art is used montana that's the and top shelf gold standard there's montana gold it's actually like a division of their huh. spray paint and then there's montana black which is just like a different you know version of their paint and then there's like and there's a couple other ones but um, they have different caps and so you buy the can and you can get it from like Blick Art Supply mm -hmm. um, or you could just get it from there's um, aerosol but it, vendors. it still comes in a can like a it's a can like a normal yeah. cheap yep can. yep so it runs in the ballpark of like 750 all the way up to like 14 dollars a can um, depending on where you get it from so it's not cheap. Um, yeah, because I imagine it's the same size as a normal yeah, can of spray paint, right? Yeah, exactly. But this spray paint is, um, the Montana Gold is a low pressure spray, spray paint. So if you think about mm. using spray paint and you, you're holding it down for a long time, your finger might get sore. This is like pressing down like on a, you know, thing of butter. It's just easy. Yeah. You just hold it down and you just feel like it is very low pressure, almost like airbrushing. And you can change out the caps on these so you can have a really fine point cap. Granted, it doesn't make you, you know, you doesn't make it able to like paint like the thickness of like a pencil, but you can get pretty fine lines using spray paint, which otherwise you'd, you'd use a spray paint from Lowe's and you just get crazy over spray and all this stuff. This is really, it's an artist grade spray paint. So yeah. it's, it's really nice quality stuff. They've got uh, a wide collection of, of, colors and um it makes painting so much quicker if you're doing large scale and you're if you're comfortable with using um spray paint so yeah like a three-story arm given a peace sign yeah exactly yep so the idea behind doing the peace signs and that was um, all spray paint all spray paint yeah Whew. yep so the idea about behind doing the spray um the doing the peace signs is i wanted something interactive so getting back to the roots of we formed the festival because we wanted people to come and interact with the, the murals and take photos. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that there was something, there was artwork down there that people would want to stand next to and take a photo of post it online. And maybe they're going to be doing this when they're standing and taking that photo. Yeah. And 80% of the time they're doing this and they're taking that photo. It's, it's great. I love it. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. Um, it's also, you know, just like the, it's like an international 
sign of, of peace. So yeah. um, it's positive pretty much around the world. And, um, you know, whereas other hand gestures in America might be, you know, like thumbs up in America is, you know, that's great. But in other countries, it's like, do not like Brazil, like thumbs up is don't do that. So, yeah. <laughs> so you get, yeah, I was kind of trying to find a something that people would interact with. And it's similar in a style to, you know, Shepherd Fairies, you know, very clean cut, um, you know, almost poster like graphics, um, his propaganda stuff. I just yeah. like the clean cutness to it. You know, it's very clean and uses like four colors. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's pretty much the style. I, I'll probably try to do one for the finale whenever that happens and using a different um, color palette. So that way I've got like three for you know each of the years. I didn't do one this year, but this year was awkward. Yeah. Well, the only, the, Bright spots is what you called it this year, right? Correct. Yep. So kind so, of a branch of that, yeah, overall festival. Did you still have as many people that wanted to come, even with all the COVID restrictions and everything all over the world? Yeah. So the artists, obviously, that are international. I mean, they yeah. just couldn't. They just couldn't come um, because there was the travel restrictions at the time. I mean, everybody that, yeah, everybody came from one of the coasts for for this last one. So yeah, still getting a big reach. Yes. Yep. So I had to limit it to, you know, U.S. artists, which is fine. You know, there's like a lot of great talent in the United States. Um, oh, so for sure. we only, you know, we, we knew we wanted to do something. Um, so many other events were just cut, halting everything or mm. they're canceling or postponing till 2021, which honestly, a lot of these that have posted or postponed to 2021, I still don't think they're going to happen in this coming year. Yeah like beer festivals and stuff like how the hell is that stuff going to happen who knows but that's a different, that's, that's completely different topic but <laughs> we knew we wanted to do something and so our team agreed we're going to raise the money to make sure we can do three murals space them equally equally apart granted we were going to be the first we were the first i think and only event in jackson that happened in 2020 so we knew we were kind of under a microscope if we screwed up or if there was a corona I, a virus outbreak and because of us it was that was it, it for us so we had to make sure we had so many safety precautions and social distancing all that stuff mm. and it was not as fun and i'll be honest like it was not as fun did you guys like have to go up to people and be like excuse me can you please put your mask on um like doing not, that stuff or not not, not really a, not necessarily our saving grace is it's an outside event so yeah you know you're open air um so that was that was nice we did have the signage in place in case you know, so that way we could just at least point to, well, we had, you know, dozens of signs in front of your face when you're walking up to a mural right. that said, right. please be respectful and all this stuff. We didn't have any issues and we pulled it off. It worked great. And we had people coming, um, whether they were driving by and, uh, and just viewing from a distance or if they were walking by. We also did a live stream camera, um, oh, cool. which was nice. So people that wanted a view from their home. So that was like a nice touch that we we were able to do this year yeah um but it wasn't as fun um yeah. because we we didn't have events you know bright walls is really great because yes we've got awesome and really talented artists painting each day but each day of bright walls we also had a, a free community event and that could have been like a kids and family day where there's a bunch of just different activities like a um you know like a fair so to speak and everything's free and yeah there's live music on one of the days we couldn't do any of that. There was no music yeah. and wasn't as fun. You get some but consolation prize. No one know that like you still gave people way more than they would have had otherwise. Yes. Yep. So that was, that's why we were doing it. We knew that at the end of it, we were going to have three great new murals. We actually ended up having four because one of the artists finished early enough and wanted to do another mural. So now we have an even 40 murals that have happened in the span of three years. And uh, it's, it's great. Um, our goal is to get at least 50. So if this coming year is we're able to pull off the finale, we'll have at least 50 and then we'll be done. And uh, if we have to do something similar to what we did this year in 2021, then we'll probably do three ish murals and we'll have maybe some, uh, some bands that can perform um, yeah. just so there's a little bit more than, than what we, we had this year. 
Um, but yeah, it'll be the finale will happen when it's safe to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which I hope is 2021. Yeah. We would all love it, man. I know. Whenever it happens though, I'll, uh, I'll come check it out and I'd love to meet you. Um, Yeah. Tell me this, uh, moving forward, once bright walls finally does wrap up, do you want to keep doing art events or at least some kind of creative events within the city or are you not really thinking that far because you got to get past the finish line? So we get that question a lot. And my response to that is um, I, I think I always want to continue to give back and do something for my community that attracts people to Jackson. I mean, I'm, I'm a competitive person in nature and I really want Jackson to be one of the best, uh, cities, cities in Michigan. So, um, if there's something, I I'm trying to figure out what there is that Jackson has never had before. Maybe it's been done before in other communities. That's fine. What I loved about bright walls is that Ann Arbor didn't have a mural festival before ever. Right. Um, so it's like we did something before Ann Arbor and it's, yeah. that was a huge win. Not it's just something borrowing like a something pride from point. a bigger city. Yeah. Yeah. Like a pride point for me. Grand Rapids has never had a mural festival. Traverse city has never had a mural festival. All these all the big cities that are constantly the poster, the poster childs for Michigan yeah. travel, they don't have a mural festival. Detroit does, and they do a really good one, but all these other ones, you know, um, Lansing after our first year, Lansing reached out to me and they said, we want to do a mural festival. And so I met with them and they, they did their own version of a mural festival in Lansing. Um, but, uh, other than that, I mean, there's a few other ones. Battle Creek's got a small mural festival. That's, that's a great mural festival. Um, and if there's other ones that, that I'm not aware of and people that listening to this, they they know of, and that are happening in Michigan, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, um, for sure. cause I love checking them out and I love meeting the people that are organizing it. Um, cause I think there's something you can learn from, from everyone who's hosting a mural festival. There's some like little interesting thing that you guys haven't thought of that they did and you can mm. creatively kind of put it, put your own spin on it. And that's what I love about it. Um, we went down to, so we've, we've been traveling outside of Michigan, this is before coronavirus, checking out other mural festivals Mm -hmm. and uh, going to some of the ones that we really hear a lot uh, about, or we know some artists that are painting in. So we've been down to the Outer Space Project is a mural festival. It happens in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. We went down to that one last year and was very, we were very impressed. We pulled uh, a few artists from that. One of them was in this year, Steffi Lynn. We met, I met her down at, outer space project and she came up and painted oh that's but, awesome i love her um that have a nice day i feel like that was one of if not the most transformative paintings just as far as what was there before and what's there now yeah it it was great we loved it um i will say uh that we had a little bit of a hiccup with um the not the li- the library that it's painted on they loved it but there's a jackson historic and planning commission mm. And that library is a historic library. The front of it is oh. what we painted was an addition that was in like 1980. Yeah. It was added onto the Carnegie library mm-hmm. and it's, yeah, I mean, it's a completely separate, but connected building. And so we got approval from the city and everything, but then the historic planning planning commission said, absolutely not. Like if it's connected, it still needs to be viewed as one building. So we were really bummed about it, but the city said, no, this doesn't apply to it. Um, and so we were able to c- continue painting it, which I'm glad we did. Uh, yeah. I think it turned out great. The people love it. And, you know, it's nice being able to, it's kind of a, like an entry corridor of our city. So you drive in and now you just see this awesome, huge mural that says, have a nice day. That's, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. So much of the art too is, it just has enough li- uplifting vibe to it, you know? Yeah. But, I, and I did mention, mention that Cincinnati, um, I think they have the oh, yeah. best mural festival. It's called Blink and it happens um, every other year. So similar to Art Prize, how it's every other year. Yeah. Blink um, is the same way. They um, have murals painted. They have about 14 murals painted. and But their biggest thing is they do projection mapping on buildings. So they've got really cool yeah. old historic buildings and they um hire projection artists from all over the globe, you know, Germany and beyond. And they 
map they'll, they'll say like this is your building you're getting the library and then the artist will completely design something so that the library comes to life and takes shape and there's some um, projection artists that'll project over an old mural and then bring that mural to life and make it dance around it blows my mind hmm. um, so they had about 14 murals being painted but then they had about 30 projection murals um, all across the city of Cincinnati. And then they had installation interactive pieces like this massive uh, football field sized. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. You could walk inside of it and it felt like this like alien spaceship. It was an all inflatable. So they like fly in these international art exhibits that are interactive and have them readily available. Everything's free. Like they'll have these wow. cool teeter totters that light up as you're, sitting on them at night um it's all it kind of takes uh, takes place at night there's mural painting during the day but it is crazy they shut down all the blocks in cincinnati and i met the guy who organizes it because we were actually sitting in a bar and talking to a woman she's like, oh yeah i work for the i work for uh, the city of cincinnati and we're like oh cool we think it's great she's like yeah my nephew's the one who organizes the whole thing i was like give me his name i want to talk to him about it so it's wow, amazing. I cool chance out, meeting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Their budget is about $2 million, which I was like, oh my gosh, that's nuts. But then I figured out they have so <laughs> many um, headquarters in um, Cincinnati. So it's like Kroger's headquartered there. Mm. Um, Procter & Gamble's headquartered there. Really? Macy's is headquartered there. Um, and then they have, you know, uh, like an NFL sports team and they have mm. a so it's a big city that people just don't think of because they're always traveling beyond Cincinnati to go somewhere else. So yeah. it's awesome. And they were able to figure out by using um, cell phone towers and encouraging people to log on to free Wi-Fi hotspots a place all across the city. They were able to accurately count the number of people that attended because they took a before and after. And they had about 1.2 million people that showed up to this. Wow. It just blew my mind. It's about a week long. It's cool. That's very cool. So, yeah, love it. It's a great festival. There's festivals, that ha like I said, that happen all, all across the United States. Um, and happy that now Bright Walls is kind of considered, you know, a recognized artist or a rec recognized mural festival by the artist community. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it really is, too, because I think before I got in touch with you, um, I had just started following the hashtag Bright Walls on Instagram. Uh -huh. And after I had seen some of these things that people were taking pictures of and posting on there, I just reached out to one of the people that posted and I was like, what is going on here? And the, it was somebody from Chicago was like, oh, it's the, this thing that happens in Jackson. It's the coolest thing that I've been to. And I've been to all of them. I was like, oh, well, in Jackson? Okay. Yeah. I so then I was name. like, I got to get to the maybe, bottom yeah. of this. Yeah. I, I saw that Chicago guy. He made a trip up and was taking pictures of it. And he, yeah, he travels around to the mural festival. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, the other, you know, point of pride for us was um, the Chicago Tribune named Jackson, a top 20 destination in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, in 2020, this is granted before the pandemic hit, but we were blown away and they cited bright walls in the article. Uh, it's like, wow, this was so cool for Jackson to be on the map as a destination in, in the Midwest. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm really inspired too by uh, just the way that a lot of people would say, oh man, I don't like the, the art scene here. I'm going to move somewhere that has a better art scene. There's, there's something to be said for saying, you know, if, if you want a better art scene, bring it to your town. You yeah, know? exactly. Just Make the, it. the energy that you have to bring the things to your town that you feel like it's lacking rather than just ditching it like a lot of people do from midwest towns you know they yep. <laughs> they'll go well i'll go to detroit or grand rapids or you know one of the, one of the bigger towns yeah. yeah 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 ann arbor is great but you know i like being the, the it's moving to see somebody care about their community enough to to make this happen i know i love to always tell people you know everyone's like oh i'm moving to ann arbor there's so much more to do <laughs> and i always say you know it's like if you're you know, you can live like a king in Jackson, Michigan. You know, the cost, the like home value in Jackson, Michigan is, you can live like a king. It's three times more expensive to move to Ann Arbor. And if you really wanted to, 
to go out and experience all these awesome things that Ann Arbor has, like during the week, you don't have time for it. I can still go to Ann Arbor and drive there. Yeah. And you know, the cost of living is just so much more affordable in Jackson. And now we're trying to do cool things like mural festivals and Ann Arbor um, wanted to do a mural festival just this year. And they pulled something off. I haven't seen it yet in person, but they, um, one of our artists that we've had before Wheezy from Detroit uh, yeah. painted in Ann Arbor. So she was, she's become a good friend. Um, she was our first mural that we ever had. And I reached out to her and, you know, I said, well, I really want you to come and paint in Jackson. And she kind of just thought we, it was going to be kind of a joke uh, mural festival. So she painted something really quick in like a day and a half. Yeah. And we love it. It's a great mural. It served as the backdrop for my wedding photos. <laughs> and then she came back year two and I t got to talking to her and I said, you really didn't like give it your best work on that uh, first mural, did you? She's like, no, I honestly thought you guys were going to be kind of a, you know, like you weren't going to be as big of a thing as you guys are. And I'm really impressed with what you've done. And it's one of my favorite festivals I've ever painted in. So <laughs> that was kind of a cool thing. That's funny that you say that about that uh, mural too, because that is another one of my favorites just as, as yeah. in terms of like how it changed the the space. I know it's, it's great. And then her one from 2019 completely different very much more realistic you know photo realistic of uh, mm, uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah flowers and hugely transformative um a very big wall for her huge wall and the building owner actually completely repainted his building it used to be tan color and he wanted it to the mural to pop so he completely repainted the building before she even started painting specifically for the mural yep Wow. Yep. And there was a tree that was out there in front of it. And he had it removed because he didn't want it to interfere <laughs> with the murals. Like, th so people are, they're taking this thing serious. Like they want this, they love the murals. They know it attracts people to Jackson. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. Man, that's awesome. I'll let you go, man. Cause I, I kept you longer than I, I said that's I would. Right. So I, I apologize for that, but thank you for, for coming on. Um, before I let you go, is there anything that uh, you want to draw people's attention to any uh, social media websites uh anything else i would just say that um you know check out our website it has a link to all of our social media channels we've got that's brightwallsjackson.com and i'll put that in the show notes too yeah exactly yep so it's uh it's got our youtube channel so if you wanted to see video of of what it's like there's some great um highlight reels from 2019 and 2020 yeah. in there so, so yeah, check those, those, out. those videos were great yeah yeah we've got some this year we had a, a local guy do our video and it turned out great. A lot of talent. And in 2019, we had, we had a guy who travels to mural festivals um, to create video for him. And he came from New York. So that was really cool. I mean, I feel like video is such an, a great way to show and put you in a, you know, give you a, a great sense of how a, how a festival or an event is. You know, pictures mm -hmm. don't really do, they do some good justice, but video really takes it beyond. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially with these, some of the sides of these walls, because some of them are just huge. Yeah. Like the, the David Rice one, that looks like it's on the side of a grocery store. Or what is that? From 2019 or um, 2020? Yeah. Hold on. Let me, I, I got it right here. The one with the, the flowers, the tipped over flowers and the butterflies. Yep. So that was on, that was on the side of a, like a, just a small restaurant. Um, but the, that's a huge transformation before and after. I don't know if the photos from before or there it's a it's like a wall that was like falling apart and you know still is kind of in a stage of decay but yeah well i mean uh, you can see yeah the the varying spots where there's bricks missing or chipped yeah in. it's cool and then um the other nice thing about bright falls that sets us apart from other festivals is that we put we have a a local um lighting manufacturer in jackson so they actually make really high efficient led lights Oh, that's awesome. And as part of their sponsorship, they donated all the lights for our festival so that after the murals are painted, we install lights that come on dusk to dawn on all the murals. So you can, <laughs> you so can drive cool. by at night and see all the light or all the murals are lit up. So Dude, that no is so other, cool. Yeah, no other mural festival that I'm aware of that does something like that. Um, so that's really cool and kind of really plays into the whole bright walls. And that was not even planned, the whole pun. No, no, it really it does tie it all together, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. So and then and yeah, it came right from Jackson. I mean, the lights are, you know, they're not just I mean, they're made in Jackson. So it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah.
and then you keep it keep it in tone too. It seems like you've had every year, well, except for the 2020, the the first two years there was at least one person, you and at least one other person from Jackson. Yep, Jeremiah was the other person who represented Jackson from yeah year one. That's great, man. So you get the world flavor and some local flavor in there all too. Yep. Yep. Year two, um, we made, we did a call for Michigan artists and then we had to, our team picked what we felt was the best, re- you know, um, representation of artists that mm-hmm. also fit well in our community. So we had a whole wall dedicated to Michigan artists from, you know, Detroit and Lansing and, you know, the West side of the state. It, it turned out great. Yeah. And that's so cool. I can't wait to see what, it, hopefully it happens you know, this, this year, but uh, whenever it happens, I'd, I'd love to be there and get a chance to meet you in person, man. Yeah. Um, you got my cell phone. So shoot me a text message and, and we'll, we'll connect and I'll, I'll even introduce you to whatever artist you want to meet. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah, That'd be so cool, man. Well, thank you for coming on the show, but even, even more than that, thank you for uh, investing in the, the place that you love. Yeah. I think it's great for people to to try to give back or leave a legacy in in their own community. And you can, you can start, you can start anywhere really. And, and there's, you'll, you can always find someone who's like-minded in a community that that wants to do something and give back. So, um, you know, I recently was asked for a quote, you know, of how do you uh, make a difference in a community? And mine is, you know, that there's, amazing events that happen across the state every year Mm. and you know events really they make up the fabric of of these small communities across Mm. the state of michigan um and then but the really good events are ones that people will leave the you know drive across county lines or state lines to go experience yeah yeah for sure what are they doing that you can't do in your community So is what, why can't, why can't it be done in your community? And even if it's a smaller scale, something, you know, like a mural festivals have happened in other communities and it was a, well, why can't we do it? And Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's, you can figure things out and and make it your own and put your own spin on it. So it's kind of a challenge for people to, what do you really enjoy it? And what do you want to go experience? And what do you go drive to go, you know, an hour beyond to go experience why can't you do that in your own community? Yeah. Yeah. The first person that I ever interviewed on this show was um, Paul Brogan from uh, Rivertown Adventures in Lansing, Michigan. And uh, he, he's big into that same idea that you can, you can make a difference. And uh, he said, you know, just depending on what you want to do, go talk to city council, say, this is what I want to do. And they'll mm-hmm. say, great, this is the resources, or we can't help you, but go talk to this guy. And if you, exactly. if you do that enough times, you'll, you'll find the right person. Mm-hmm. If you're passionate about something and, uh, you know, you have a plan for it and then like-minded people and you can figure out how to do it, go for it. Yeah. And if you don't do and if you fail and that's okay, it's okay to fail and, you know, learn from your mistakes and why, why didn't it work right? Yeah. It's okay to fail. It's just not okay to not try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good note to end on, man. Um, Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for putting on bright walls and uh, getting your town beautiful. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yep. Well, I will keep in touch with you and I look forward to uh, meeting you face to face someday. Sounds great. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right, folks. Thanks for checking this one out. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Make sure you check out Bright Walls, brightwallsjackson.com. Hit up all the sponsors, heyguysmediagroup.com. Rivertown Adventures in Lansing at rivertownadventures.com and Baby Farm Soaps on Facebook. Later, y'all.